Hey everybody, let's talk about pacing and focus in video games. We could talk about it with a big game, but we're going to talk about it with a really small game because it's easier to grapple with. Also, most of you are probably developing small games rather than big ones. Let's talk about Starfighter Research and Development. This is a very recent game released on Itch.io. If you like shmups, you should probably go play it before you watch this video because I'm basically going to spoil it. Not, not like there's a plot, but I'm going to spoil all the mechanics. Um, I think it's made by just one guy. And for that, it's very, very good. Uh, I don't regret buying, buying it or playing it at all. But that said, if you are that one guy, I am about to talk about the part of your game that I didn't like. So don't think that I am saying the game is bad. I think the game is quite good for one person, and it's, it's quite good for a small team. I just have some concerns about the pacing and about the focus. And it's a good example game to explain what those actually mean, what those terms actually are. So this is a game where you fight through waves of enemies. Let's just get straight to it, and I'll show you the main core game loop. This is it. So like any shmup, it's basically uh, flying through space and shooting at whatever you want to shoot at. I've got guns that follow my mouse, I've got guns that automatically track the, local, the nearest enemy, and I've got guns that fire straight forward, and I can equip them in a wide variety of things. I've got all of them firing the same gun right now just because I think it's funny. Um, but you don't have to. You can equip them with a there's, a... there's a lot of different options, and it's pretty well done. But this part of the game is not very fun. Uh, this trickle-in system, where these enemies slowly come in in these standard slow waves, this doesn't work when the screen is this big, because it feels like they're just waiting to die. On the other hand, when targets come in like this, just massive, massive hordes of targets, and I've got to keep firing and blowing them away, and there's these, just this rain of blinky gold coins. This feels really good. Like, if this had been the core game loop, that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's not bad with the trickling in enemies, but those trickling in enemies don't contribute to the flow of the game. They aren't focused, and they aren't well-paced. But that is, going and punching our way through a giant uh, rev river of, of targets. Imagine if instead of just one or two enemies trickling in from the corner of the screen and waiting to die, instead there were hordes of enemies, and rather than trying to kill them all off, we were just trying to punch through them all. Uh, that would have been really interesting and fresh and fun. And that's also annoying. There we are. Fighting the bosses is actually relatively interesting because we have a massive hitbox. Uh, not only is our hitbox large, but we have several different parts of our ship that can get hit, uh, and they each take damage, damage separately. So because of that, dodging gunfire is much more interesting and hazardous than it is in most games, meaning that you can have a much uh, less severe set of shots matter a lot more. So rather than a bullet hell, a moderate number of shots become very, very alarming because you're going to get hit and lose your, your wingman. Uh, also, as these things get blown off, your hitbox gets smaller, which is also an interesting idea, but unfortunately you, use, you lose so much capability that it's impossible to really keep playing meaningfully after you've taken any significant damage. Um, but again, that part is interesting. The idea of having multiple hitboxes and multiple parts of your ship that can get damaged is a strength. So I would say that the two things that this game is best at with its core game loop are massive hordes of enemies, like this, and the fact that you have really big hitboxes that mean a lot. Those two things could have been leveraged far, far more, and that is the nature of focus. This part's fun. Um, if you could, if you're making a game, you should figure out what makes your game fun, and you should focus on that. You can discard almost everything else. This game didn't need waves of enemies. If it did have waves of enemies, it didn't need waves of enemies that needed to wait and just wait to die. What it needed was waves of enemies where we really want to carve our way through them, and we really want to dodge their incoming fire. Uh, and instead, all it has is these guys that just wait to die. It's just not, not as much fun as it could have been. On the other hand, this is a little bit uh, more more my style because it it requires us to keep well clear of the shots, or we will get damaged to uh, our our orbs, our rotating orbs. They're so far out there that dodging. See, it just got hit. Dodging stuff is is quite a challenge. So this part is fun. 
multi-phase bosses would have also been nice. Uh, if these enemies here didn't react by just shaking slightly every time they hit, but instead had a much more vigorous reaction, that might have helped this some. Like if they turned into homing enemies when you shot them, or if they radically changed their approach, or I don't know, if they called in guys from off the sides. Anything to make this part more interesting. That's the core game loop, and I don't think it is quite as well paced or focused as it could have been. Uh, and that's a problem I see a lot with indie devs. Uh, they stick too close to genre conventions, not realizing that their strengths might require them to throw those genre conventions away. And if your game, if you feel that your game would be stronger without a genre convention like trickling in waves of enemies, your game will be stronger without that, and you should just throw that convention away. Um, you do not need to stick to conventions. It doesn't matter what the convention is, getting rid of it will probably make your game better because it means that you found something that your game is better at than that conventional play. Now I'm going to go ahead and commit suicide just so that we can talk about the rest of the game. Notice that I earned fed creds and research points. Uh, the fed creds are the coins and the research points are just the timer. So this is the framing device. Most of these games with a core gameplay loop that is simple like this have a framing device that allows us to reframe the core gameplay loop. Pretty basic idea, right? You want to take that nugget of play that you've built and reframe it as many times as possible in as many different lights. So you use a framing device. In this case, the framing device is researching your ship, uh, getting upgrades and plugging them into your starfighter so that you get a new ship as you go through the cosmos. So, a framing device's purpose is to reframe the core gameplay loop. And the way it does that, there's usually two big ways. The first is it lets the player change what sort of powers they have going into that gameplay loop. So that allows them to change either the kinds of enemies they're facing or the way in which they face those enemies. In this case, you can build a different ship and you can research upgrades for your ship. The other thing that the, that the framing device needs is when the player gets to the end of the core gameplay loop and dies or completes it or whatever, they need to say, yes, I accomplished something. So they need to get a resource that allows them to feel like they accomplished something. And in this case, that's research and credits. Uh, so this is a pretty solid core gameplay loop uh, and a pretty solid framing device around it. But it has a problem, because about an hour and a half into the game, it falls apart. Here's the research. I've got about a third of these things researched. Um, I wouldn't have balanced this research quite like this, but it's just my preference. It's not a bad research tree at all. Uh, there has never been a time where I felt like I had quite enough research points. I'm always like, yeah, I got more research points. That's great. I can get my next upgrade. Whoa. That's great. That's how you should feel. The player should always want those resources, and they should always feel like they've accomplished something. The other thing is this asteroid base. Now, this asteroid base has the buildings in it. So in order to research any given technical thing, you need a building that reflects it. So if you want to research a laser, you need a laser lab. If you want to research a shield, you need a shield lab. But the problem is that this is already complete. I've only got a third of the science upgrades but I've completed my asteroid base. There's literally nothing else for me to build. That's it. Because of that, half of the framing device has just vanished. Once I no longer have anything to spend credits on, there's no reason to have credits. The only thing I can spend credits on are like those upgrades right before I start the game, and those are super basic. So uh, this is not a good pacing for this. Uh, it, what you, your framing devices need to hold up to the end. No matter how many legs you have, whether it's one or two or three, all of those legs need to be almost complete when the player completes the game. You never want the player to have one of those get complete and then say, okay, well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore, because then you've lost half of your framing device. That's mostly a pacing thing, so when you are building your framing devices, please keep that in mind and make sure that your players can't simply finish off one of your framing devices because once it's done it's done that that's it your framing device is falling apart it's bad don't let that happen now that said i don't think this is a bad 
uh, framing device. The framing device itself is quite good. I just think that the pacing of the framing device needed more work. Um, and that is kind of what I'm trying to talk about here. You need to have this game feel, any game you build, not just this one, you need to have it feel fun over the course of the game. And pacing and focus are really how you focus in on that fun. You want the game to feel good at any given moment, sure, sure. You want explosions to feel like they're explodey. But in the, at the end of the day, how the game feels next minute, the minute after, the minute after, that's all controlled by how the game unfolds and what the game focuses on. So you need to make sure that your game has peaks and troughs. You need to make sure that your game has, uh, you know, hard bits and easy bits. But you also need to make sure that it, it, it doesn't ever run out of steam at the wrong moment. You need to make sure that your framing devices don't suddenly fall apart. You need to make sure that your levels maximize the amount of stuff that you do well and minimize the stuff, amount of stuff that you do poorly. I hope this was clear. Uh, in the end, I think that this was a pretty solid game uh, for, a, uh, for a small team. And uh, I don't have any complaints aside from the, uh, the pacing and the focus. So hopefully this was educational.